Okay, guys. Uh, in the American Civil War, there was a uh, famous general called Nathan Bedford Forrest, and he once said that uh, in a fight, he wanted to get there first with the most men, meaning when the battle started, uh, he'd have more guns shooting, and the enemy would have fewer, and he might win. And in NFL football and also in Canadian football, there's a thing called the hurry-up offense, which uh, is intended to give the enemy, or the opposing team, uh, I prefer the term enemy, uh, not enough time to uh, salvage a game. Uh, things are happening so fast that uh, the acceleration by one side uh, makes it impossible for the other side to win and that's what's going on here uh, there are no heavy tanks I mean this is this is one of the amazing things about the evolution of this game that you can have a scenario like this uh, in the early years I, I suspect in most games you know there'd be seven or eight heavies there'd be a couple of mediums a couple of TDs and a couple of uh, um, SPGs already and maybe one or two uh, light tanks on each side well with the proliferation of vehicle types, uh, there are more scenarios now than there used to be. So it's more demanding on your tactical uh, sense of the game. And for some people, that's difficult. For other people, uh, they lap it up with excitement. And that's what I'm doing here. Now, I'm platooned in this battle with Jim Ape in his Canpan 105 and McCulver in his SU-101. And our idea is to join the stronger force. Now, I'll just do a little drawing here. So this group undoubtedly is going to advance like this. It happens all the time. Uh, but in this battle, because there are no heavies uh, prepared to duke it out in this area, we're not going to split into two groups that are not supporting one another. You know, that makes my head explode on this map. There's a pitch battle going on here, and there's another one going on here. And uh, they cannot support one another. So what our platoon is going to do for sure is we are going to support the stronger group. And the enemy split into two groups. And just uh, I'll just insert here that uh, you know I, I fa I'm fascinated by replays. I've saved all my replays that I'm able to save. I've got over 30,000 of them. And uh, the number one mistake in World of Tanks, in my opinion, uh, it's right up there with Lone Wolf. Uh, BS, but uh, the number one m tactical mistake is for the team to split into two groups or even more groups that are not mutually supporting. Uh, the group that is about to be destroyed in this area, if they had had help defending the position, they might have prevailed or uh, might have made it a more, a more even encounter. But it was nothing of the kind, and you will see the enemy fleeing uh, very quickly here. Uh, totally outnumbered, totally outclassed, uh, demoralized, and running for their lives. And, you know, uh, there's a lot of good players over there. This is not a mismatch, you know. Um, uh, that's one of the frustrations of this game is that, uh, you know, if you're running XBM, you can see on the screen uh, sometimes that, you know, the, the quality uh, and skill level and a level of experience on one side is far greater than the other. But that does not apply in this case. So I'm going to hit the space bar here and advance it at regular speed just so you, so you can see how um, how long this takes and uh, I ended up with 6,600 spotting damage uh, it didn't show on the screen so there was stuff that I was getting that didn't uh, didn't record at the the top of the screen so we'll just see you can see my uh, platoon mates uh, getting into position, and I'll pause it just when the first vehicle is lit. Okay, now the T100LT on our team saw the HWK. I didn't see him. And uh, this is not, I, I suppose this is not a, well, you could, you could call it a crossfire because the two TDs that I'm platooned with are going to be shooting here. The guys with me are shooting here. And it's a concentration of converging fire that the enemy is not going to be able to deal with. Now, there's one more thing I should mention here. Uh, it would be totally awesome if we could have handed out a few instructions to these guys. Just to make it tactically perfect. You get the Scorpion G over here. You get the grill over here. You get the M46 here. Uh, lighting up targets for them. I don't know if the Jag Tiger can get away. I don't know if he's stock or, or what. But uh, that would have made it even more 
a spectacular a victory. But as it stands, it was good enough. So I'll hit spacebar here again, and we'll just watch this in real time. So I just lit up four guys, so there's five lit now. And Jim and McCulver are ready to start shooting. And I'm, I was spotted by the uh, 105, maybe. Don't know. And I, I do ovals here. So, uh, you know, I'm timing this. I'm trying to time this for reload the reload cycle. So I just get the light and the retreat. I'll just increase the sound here a little bit. Then I go back. And I retreat. You know, and if I if I had tried to stop to shoot, uh, it would have messed the whole uh, effort here. The scouting effort would have been uh, interfered with. So I get a bonus here. That Scorpion G is in a very difficult spot there now. And the, like I said earlier, the enemy is fleeing for his and her lives. And, uh, you know, in a situation like this, you pile on the pressure. And I made one mistake here. I'll show you the mistake. I, I, the mistake is not getting hit by those guys. Because I don't want the lights to go out right. You try to prolong it as long as possible. There, There's an unex unexpectedly, there's a Jag Tiger in the corner there. So my mistake is... Uh, not heading towards the Jag Tiger. Yeah. Because I was thinking of applying cap pressure here. And uh, I should have headed straight for the Jag Tiger, which I did not do. The T-100LT did. I think I was concentrating on getting that guy eliminated. So I veered off. I should have relit the Jag Tiger. You know, it cost me a bit of spawning damage there. But anyways, so uh, this game uh, ended up, I think we had five people left at the end. But it's largely over. And these, these fellows here, you know, I admire their abilities. I admire their skill. Uh, but they were fighting a separate battle. And our side threw a punch. Their side threw a punch. Our punch was bigger. We had more opponents. We had uh, an even greater superiority. And we ran into a force that was just not big enough, big enough to withstand us. Now, just imagine if, if these fast-moving vehicles had seen this deployment and said, Oh, sh oh you know, hey, i gotta, I got to support these guys just in case there's no heavies you know they, they, they you know in, in psychology they call it an inappropriate mental set and it's one of my favorite terms uh you know i probably forgot all the other things i learned in in the psychology 101 but inappropriate mental set uh that applies here if they had just joined their their teammates in a in a in a really powerful fire team i think they could have uh made it you know possibly even won the game but like I said earlier, the number one mistake in World of Tanks is uh, splitting up. And my my goal here was to always join the largest group. Always join the largest group. Always join the most powerful group. And it's game over, and I hope you enjoyed the video.